Hi everybody, welcome back. It is Debbie with Question Queens. Like you didn't know it was me. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm a little wound up today. Just a little bit. Just a little bitty bit. Anyway, I have a very cool video for you all. I figured after that video I just did with the Lifetime of Adventure, um, Tuomas, see I didn't nail it that time, Tuomas. In my head, I'm saying the the number two, and then O, and then mus. Tuomas. Tuomas. I think it's more like Amos. Tuomas. I'm going to say it was confidence. It's Tuomas. Tuomas. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <clears throat> this is an interview with uh, Tuomas and of Nightwish. And I wanted to check it out, so I figured I would just check it out with you guys. And I want to learn more about him. I know I haven't delved too much deeper into the band and the different members, but this is the start of it, and let's check it out together. All right, here we go. So, to Amos, congratulations on the eighth Nightwish album. Thank you. Um, you go wow that's for <laughs> imagination or evolution that's a lot of hammering in the background <laughs> did you see the look on his face that was funny okay <laughs> okay there it is <laughs> for Hold imagination. would you go for imagination or evolution if this you, time. No. Um, are you more uh, a person uh, who goes for the scientific explanation or more about there should be a place for mystery too? Well, there definitely should be a place for mystery, but uh, I think uh, scientific thinking and uh, thinking through evidence is the only proper way to go in all the areas of life. If I may quote uh, Carl Sagan, he, he said once that uh, Imagination will often take us to places that never were, but without imagination we go absolutely nowhere. And that pretty much sums it up. That's a great one. Uh, but science is the way to go, you say? I really think so, yeah. Why Thinking you... based on evidence. Mm, in the... Why do you, think... do you feel that? This has to be in the middle of... No, it's part one. She seems to be asking, like, I don't know what, he seems confused as, as me. Like, I don't know what she's actually trying to get at. You all know what she's getting at? Because I don't. In the, why do you think, do you feel that? <clears throat> well, um, I, think, I, I think it's common sense and uh, the origin of morality. I mean, th there's a reason why we have a, a justice system in the developed countries in the world. I mean, if you bring a murder suspect and uh, we rely on faith, I have absolutely no evidence that you killed the person, but uh, I have faith that you did. Let's put you into the electric chair. It's not how the world yeah. works. You need to base your conclusions into evidence. Okay. And is this the view you have, you have had all your life? Yeah, pretty much so, yeah. I've, I've been a science freak since I was a kid. My favorite subject at school was uh, biology. I used to belong to this uh, bird watching club and astronomy club, hiking club in my high school. And uh, I was very fascinated about the natural world. Even went to a university to study biology for, for about half a year before Nightwish kicked off. Okay. Um... At home, was it the same? The, your parents are, um, believe in the scientific explanation as well, or was it also a Well, my parents have always said that uh, search for yourself, find your own truth. And that's the way I think kids all over the world should be edu educated. Okay. Um, uh, in the last years, you've read books of the Dawkins and Hitchens and forgot the other name, but, <laughs> um, and you, you said, you have said that the fault plays in those. 
His expressions are killing me. I mean, are you all picking up on And it's just little bitty expressions. But it he's got a very, very expressive face. And you know I'm an empath, so I can just feel him. And he's his amusement. It's not like he's thinking she's stupid. It's just more of happy amusement. I have a feeling he's like that a lot. But um, I love his face. I love his expressions. I love his whole uh, demeanor and how he's handling. Like, he, he really doesn't, I can tell he's like, what exactly are you getting at? But she's not actually asking her questions clear or, or really in context of anything. And I don't know. I just think that's really, it's really cute. He's, he's, I like him a lot. Okay. There's the face right there. Those eyes, I can read. I can. <laughs> um, and you, you said, you and have I'm, said that the fault plays in those books. I'm so sorry. I'm going to back it up a little bit. And I'm so sorry about the hammering in the background. That's not me. That's on the video. So um, I'm not sure why it's, that's a terrible place to interview somebody. The okay. Dawkins and Hitchens and I forgot the other name. But right here. <laughs> um, right and there. You, d you, said, you have said that the fault plays in those books. Um, you were fascinated by it. Yeah. Um, what, what do you mean with fault plays, scientific play? Scientific play, thought, what? I'm sorry I didn't hear you. The scientific that. fault plays in those books, they, they fascinated you? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm still fascinated about stories and fantasy as well, but there's something about the uh, magic of reality, the poetry of science, because it's true. If you, if you truly understand uh, the fact, some people still call, call it the theory of evolution by natural selection, to me it's the most spiritual and poetic thing there is, that every single living organism comes from the same ancestor and we're all cousins and some people get really scared about the thought they think it's uh, diminishing to the human species and I just experience it in a whole different way it's the most humiliating and I mean not humiliating but it, humbling experience and uh, I think it's very poetic Indeed, and that's, that was uh, one of the biggest inspirations when it came to writing music for this album. And you've never had that, that fear that other people may have? You've never experienced that? Not, you say not really, no. I just feel re really, really happy and privileged to be alive. Because uh, the odds that we are here, that you are here, they're just astronomically small. So we should really make the best out of the few decades that we have in the sun. Um, the album title is based on... Uh, what the, let's see. T Darwin, Darwin quote, yes. I was yes. confusing it with Dawkins, so... Just mm. <laughs> but, um, let's see. Uh, when did you come upon this quote? Um, in which the album titles come Well, uh, I read The Origin of Species uh, in high school and haven't read it since, but uh, every now and then I go back to it and read snippets of it and then I just found this beautiful paragraph which actually ends the whole book. From so simple a beginning, endless forms most beautiful have been and are being evolved. And just those Hang four on. words. Hang on, I have to hear that again. Gosh, there's so much background noise. I love this guy. Instantly. Love him. Which actually ends the whole book. From so simple a beginning, endless forms most beautiful have been and are being evolved. And just those four words, endless forms most beautiful, they sound so superbly beautiful it's when you say it out loud. And that's really what the album is about also. It's, it's all about the diversity of life, the beauty of the natural world. So a perfect fit. Uh, but when was it that you um, uh, got the book out of the, of the cupboard and just saw, hey, maybe this is stuff for an album? Oh, about a year and a half ago, maybe, when I started writing songs. Um, 
Yeah, I would say summer 2013. But uh, we didn't decide the album title until last summer. So for a long time we uh, pondered whether it should be Ilan or at some point it was the greatest show on earth. Uh, that sounded a bit too pompous for an album title. And uh, then we just realized that, hold on, there's a song on the album called Endless Form is Most Beautiful. That would actually make a perfect album title as well. And what about, well, um, this specific quote speaks to you? Oh, um, about the unity of everything, about uh, us all being one. But does it trigger a feeling? Oh, yes. Like what? Humbleness, uh, uh, gratitude, uh, love. And you, um, in a in a news press release, I've read that um, you've said that over the past five six years you've changed as a person, also partially because you've read those books. Well, you change constantly. Oh yes. Of yeah. But With a experience in life with uh, what you experience, what you read, the people you meet. It's just a natural process that happens day by day. Yes, but uh, how did those book, books influence you? They influenced me in, uh, like I said, truly understand said the it. core of evolution. And that was a spiritual experience for me. And it was so inspiring that I wanted to write the whole album about it. What was the first song then that you wrote for the new album? Uh, that would be track number eight, Idi Maru. What does Idi Maru mean? <laughs> it's taken from a series of fantasy books from Patrick Rothfuss. So far he has uh, published two called Name of the Wind and A Wise Man's Fear. And this Idi Maru is a group of traveling musicians and uh, actors, magicians that go from town to town to perform to people and earn their living like that. It's kind of like what gypsies did in the medieval times, etc. I just found the idea fascinating because in a way us as a band are a contemporary Idi Maru. Yeah, so so basically it's a song about us. <laughs> you also <laughs> sing we are the Idi Maru. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, the single, Elan, is that the right pronunciation? Elan, yeah. Elan, also based on a quote of Whitman, Walt Whitman? Not really based, but inspired by. Inspired by. Yeah, I, I have my Song of Myself book with me almost all the time. Mm -hmm. and I happened to browse through it one day and just inspired to writing a song. Yeah. Why do you carry the book around you all the time? It's inspiring and it's comforting. Comforting um, why? Oh, it's, I, it's a personal thing. I mean, it's really hard to start to explain that, but uh, if you haven't read it, give it a try. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you, well, you called him my uncle Hero Wolf, this author, I mean. Uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that comes from the movie Dead Poet Society, where Robin Williams is often referring to Walt Whitman as Uncle Walt. Ah. So that's where, where it comes from. I've seen the film dozens of times and just stuck to me as well. Okay. Um, well, the underlying theme of that specific song um, is the meaning of all life, basically. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. it. It's all about what to do with your own life and not to be afraid and daring to take the occasional free fall or the path less traveled by, as Uncle Walt put it. And what is a, um, uh, a free fall or the path less traveled, traveled by? Mm -hmm. um, what do you mean exactly with that? Don't surrender to trends, don't surrender to what people expect you to do or what's a norm in society. I mean, rules are good, but uh, maybe you should try to be adventurous and courageous every now and then and find your own meaning of life. I, I've always found the question, so what is the meaning of life? Science cannot explain that. I mean, 
It's something different for everybody. It can be, it should be. And what is it for you? To live to the fullest, uh, to experience everything life has, has to offer, and uh, just to try to leave the planet a bit of a better place than how I found it. And um, in what way do you try to um, leave the, this planet a better place for you? Doing albums like Endless Force was beautiful to maybe raise, raise awareness and consciousness to these issues to make hopefully people think for themselves. Okay. Hopefully um, to give them similar kind of uh, uh, epiphanies which I had when I read Walt Whitman or uh, Richard Dawkins or Carl Sagan, for example. I loved that. I love him. I do. I love him. Yeah. He, is. he is such a humble man. You can just, I can feel all of that from him. And, <clears throat> sorry, allergies. Um, I love that she did an awful job on interviewing him. Like, his patience, just the expression of his patience with her and the noise in the background. And he, he, would, he laughed at it and he smiled. He's like, what is this? And his, this is just not even has to do with his answers, but his expressions are beautiful to me. Oh my gosh, they're just beautiful. He was so humbled in spirit and such a kind man where many, with his status and where he's come from and given his time, could have had so many other different reactions and he didn't. And he even tried to help her. Um, like it was, that was fascinating and so cool. I, I loved watching um, all of that. That was, sorry, I had to take that down. My camera died in the middle of um, recording. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, um, I just, I loved the whole thing. I loved getting to know him. And that's why I do these interviews because getting to know the person behind that, now I want to know all about this. Um, I Honestly, I couldn't understand endless something. So if you all could give me the information in the comments, that would be great because I, I didn't catch. I wrote endless form, and I'm sure that that's wrong. Uh, endless form, most beautiful. Edie Maru, uh, Elon, those are my notes. And, um, you know, and I loved what he said about the, like the origin of species. We're all brothers and sisters, all of us. And we're all human beings in love. And not everyone has that outlook. I just, I loved how deep he is, his thoughts, and that he has actually poured that into an album. And I get to experience it. That's all I'm sitting there thinking the whole time. Like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get to this. Um, well, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did. I truly, genuinely love this guy. Like, he is, um, he's quite a man. Quite a man, quite something else. So, uh, all right, well, that's the video. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you real soon. All right, bye-bye.